So the first question goes that when do you recall when you heard metal music for the first time? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was already into like grunge bands like Foo Fighters and Smashing Pumpkins and Nirvana and then I like got into Rage Against the Machine who was you know obviously had some metal elements uh, but yeah I, to be honest I started buying Kerrang! magazine when I was really young and it came with like three CDs so there was um like a live Sepultura song of Desperate Cry, which was amazing, and a band called Pissing Razors. Um, yeah, so there was some like underground stuff that I heard first. And the first like metal music that I bought, I went out and bought a corn single before I'd even heard the band of a song called Good God of Life is Peachy. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was just like full of screaming and swearing. And as a 11 year old kid, I loved it. <laughs> so what made you pick up a guitar and become a musician? Um I I started playing guitar when I was really young and my dad was uh not a musician but just an obsessive music fan and he was always listening to music and he had an acoustic guitar in the house but he didn't play it he just sort of bought one when he was younger. Um so I just remember just always liking music and being around music. Um, and I wanted to play guitar, but I definitely didn't really like see like some rock star guitarist and be like, Oh, I want to be like that. I just wanted to make music. Um, so I started playing guitar when I was about eight years old or so quite young. So what made you form a band and was Sulosis like your first proper band or did you had like a lot of bands already before Sulosis? No, that was the first band, yeah. We started when we were like 12. And uh, yeah, it, it was as soon as I, after playing guitar for like a year or two, and the more I got obsessed with music, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and just when I got to high school, when I was like 12, um, all I wanted to do was find musicians that I could start a band with, yeah. So you weren't like originally a vocalist in the band, but that also happened to you that you suddenly became the vocalist in the band. So what yeah. kind of like early memories yeah. do you have when it comes to singing and screaming? Um, I I performed vocals before. So like one of the first like live performances I did, I went to do this guitar course. And at the end of the course, you had to get up on stage and play a song and they brought in other musicians like a professional drummer and a bass player to accompany all of these guitarists. And I sang like an Oasis song. <laughs> um, so I've done some singing. I'd perform like some cover songs in school and like assembly and that kind of thing. And then uh, in the early days of Solosis, I used to do some backing vocals. But then I, I just didn't do it for years. And then when it came to doing our second record and we didn't have a vocalist, we had already built up some momentum. And I just thought we could spend ages trying to find another singer, trying to find someone who sounds right, looks right, is cool to tour and gets on with us. Or we could just, I could just do it. And then we don't need to think about it. So it was just like, I'm going to do it. Let's just keep going. And I had to kind of learn as I went along. So did it take like a long time to figure out the right technique for the screaming? Were you losing your voice in the early days? And and when you started, were you like immediately doing your own music or were you singing like and screaming some covers and some favorite vocalists of yours or how did that happen? Yeah, so I, I never really thought of vocals at all until I was in Silosis. So I, I'd never really done, I'd just been able to just yeah. sing a song here and there, but I'd never like about vocal technique and in terms of doing backing vocals when i was when we were really young when we were like 15 years old you just like yell and just yeah i, I didn't pay any attention to it so but when it came to actually doing vocals in silosis i hadn't done anything that resembled singing or screaming for like 10 years or something and never even that much before so i literally had to just start doing it on our second record edge of the earth I just drive around in my car, just try and scream as loud as I could, and just try and figure out 
how to emulate people like Phil Anselmo and other vocalists that screen. Um, and it took a while, but if I'm honest, I changed my technique vocally, uh, about five years ago before we did cycle of suffering. And yeah, I mean, I'm still like learning and progressing as a vocalist. So what, like you said that you were sort of like screaming in the car, like for example, to Phil Anselmo. So were you first sort of trying to mimic them as vocalists before figuring out your own way to do things or were you like immediately trying to figure out your own vocal style and your own like personality as a vocalist? Um, Yeah, I mean, there's just a bunch of vocalists that I liked uh, over the years that I never like sat down and been like, oh, I want to emulate this person and sound exactly like them. But there were just types of vocalists I like. So uh, I really like, yeah, obviously Phil Anselmo, Tim Williams, the singer of Vision of Disorder. Uh, I like Peter Dolving, the singer of The Haunted, or one of the singers in The Haunted. I think he's amazing, especially on Revolver. And I hit you with an obscure one from the new metal days, but the singer of American Head Charge, I always thought he had a great voice, screaming and singing. Um, so not all of those bands are necessarily, or vocalists are like musically huge influences on Silosis, but in terms of like the vocals, all of those guys like had a sound that I liked. And they all, they're all kind of similar. Like Peter Dolving and Phil Anselmo and the singer of Vision Disorder, they all kind of, have a similar tone to their voice um which is all like i guess they all do fry screens so when um, you started slightly screaming. different styles <laughs> so when you started screaming were you losing your voice in the early days were you sort of like pushing it too much and did it take like long time to figure out the right technique for it yeah it took a long time uh yeah i was um i yeah i'd like taste blood and i'd lose my voice or go hoarse because I just literally had no idea how to do it and there weren't any tutorials that could help me on YouTube. I got the Zen of Screaming DVD. Yeah. And I think Melissa Cross is great, but it's not it, I still didn't find it even looking back now and knowing all the technique that I know now, I still don't find that DVD particularly useful like it it sort of talks as if you already know how to do the technique but actually finding you know she makes this sort of like uh sound which is you know your false or like that's like your fry sound but in terms of pushing that into something that you can project loudly there was no it didn't make any sense to me it was it wasn't helpful so uh yeah i just had to figure it out for myself and just trying to find that distortion without pushing too hard. So what kind of like early memories do you have when it comes to like the first proper tours that you did as a vocalist? Were you sort of like ready as a vocalist to do like many shows in a row or were you like losing your voice and sort of suffering from? Yeah. I Fortunately, I I was okay on those tours. Um, I I knew that because... I was going straight into, you know, touring and I didn't want to do anything to mess with my voice and like look after myself. So I didn't drink on tour because being hung over the next day, the dehydration was just like impossible. Yep. Uh, and then I had a lot of like throat coat tea um, and yeah, I was just trying to look after myself as much as possible. So thankfully the first like few tours that I did, Um, I was able to just do a headline show and play every night. The very the very first show I did was Grass Pop Festival in 2011. Okay. It was packed out tent, so I was terrified because <laughs> I was <laughs> like just going from being the guitarist to then being the front man. Like most most singers don't just go straight into doing their first show as a singer at Grass Pop nope. in front of like <laughs> thousands of people. It was a busy tent as well, where you can find the footage on YouTube. It's it's not a small show. <laughs> so yeah. did you already back then had some kind of like warm up as a vocalist before the show? And how much, how much has that like changed through the years for you? Yeah, I used to 
do the Melissa Cross warm up. I did the lower register one because I think I'm a baritone. My voice yeah. is quite low. Um, so I would just do that. But I would find that I couldn't do it right before going on stage. I feel like, and I've learned a bit more now that I was doing the warm up, and after the warm up, I'd find it harder to scream than if I hadn't warmed up. I feel like there was something like pressure building up from the exercises. And I think from having some lessons recently, which we can get into later, uh, that I was just pushing too high in my normal range. And at a certain point in the exercises, you can switch to like head voice or falsetto uh, and take the strain off your normal vocal cord range, I guess. Are there like some specific foods or drinks that you have felt that they, for example, help you with the singing before the show that you take or something that you had like thought that they harm you that you don't want to take before the show? Um, I I don't know if there's many foods that help. Uh, the, the, the main thing is allowing at least three hours after eating before doing a show. And, and I mean, everyone kind of processes foods differently so for me like if i eat like peppers they like they don't like agree with me before doing vocals i'll just be like Bleh. so uh <laughs> yeah there's there's foods that i know specific to me that don't help obviously spicy food i like you know curries and stuff but it's not good for being a vocalist so avoiding that avoiding like caffeine and stuff or if you drink alcohol red wine because it's got uh tannins in it which is bad yeah. for your voice um but i don't drink so that's okay for me and uh yeah i i just find like throat coat tea but if you drink any kind of tea sometimes the tea can be actually feel like it dries you out as well so just lots of water just be hydrated i think you need to start drinking straight away as soon as you wake up and get as much water in you throughout the day to make sure you've had enough time to really hydrate your body. So obviously, like so far, you've released four albums with Silosis as a singer, and and now obviously the fifth one is coming up. Uh, are there like some specific albums that you could pinpoint where you have felt that you have taken like a massive step forward as a vocalist? The last two, yeah. So before Cycle of Suffering, I like I reworked on my technique just by myself. I just found a different way of like projecting it and making it louder and more aggressive sounding. So the difference between the first three albums that I did and cycle of suffering vocally is like, to me, it's night and day. Like I sound way more powerful and, and uh, on the latest record <clears throat> since doing cycle of suffering, I've had a lot of lessons with a, a vocalist called David Benitez who does Extreme Vocal Institute um, who's a great teacher and he's helped me I wanted to just go over some technique stuff because I'd never had any lessons and none of it none of the Melissa Cross stuff made sense to me so I wanted to have more of an understanding of my technique and where I'm going wrong I also found during the pandemic <clears throat> I kind of uh, lost the muscle memory of my technique Yeah, when so you don't I, see. I'd switch. Yeah, so I'd switched my technique before Cycle of Suffering and found that there a way to like project it super loud, and I was like so loud, but it still felt like uh safe, and I wasn't hurting myself. I just found like I could I could project better than ever. And then we didn't play any shows for a while, and it's the pandemic. And then I was doing some recording, and I was just like pushing and pushing and pushing to the point where. I was pushing so much that I lost like the the safe technique part of my voice and I couldn't really I just lost the control so I had to have lessons to try and like go back to finding my my technique and doing it properly um and now I have some understanding of the technique because it, it's really hard because as a guitarist you can see your instrument you can you can see what's going wrong yeah but it's so hard with vocals because everyone's body is different and feeling or describing sensations you feel inside might not necessarily be how someone else sees it or feels it. Yeah. So it's really hard. 
I think specifically being a metal vocalist is one of the hardest instruments you can learn because some people might pick it up really easily and just have just develop a good technique straight away and there are loads of vocalists like that yep but for people like me it takes me ages like I couldn't understand it I couldn't tell like what people's technique was or how I should get it I can't tell you just can't see your instrument so yeah it's frustrating so having lessons with someone who really knows specifically screaming techniques if you want to do screaming is useful It's fun that you mentioned that because I just did a like similar interview with Scar Symmetry Singer and he said that he could scream for like four hours and hours and hours and nothing would happen to his voice. That it's been always like that. That even from the first time he didn't lose the voice and he was he was like screaming for hours and hours and hours. So it's like like you said, there's like two sides of the coin in this. It's it's a funny one because I remember when we were like 15 and we were still in school, we did a battle of the bands with our first show. And the prize was to win a day in a recording studio, and we won. We went in the studio to record a demo, and just on the spot, I'd never done vocals ever. I was like, "Oh, can I do like some backing vocals?" And we're going to record some lines. Let's you then me, you then me, and it's going to be like super aggressive. Just on that day, and I remember just screaming, and it just came out perfectly. And like, even if I listen back to it now, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's I was doing like probably quite good technique." But it's sometimes just that youthful obliviousness to what you're doing is better than when a bit older. Like when I started doing vocals properly, uh, you overthinking and a- analyzing everything yeah. and tensing up. And I think people that maybe start out a lot younger and they just kind of just do it. Maybe maybe there's something to it. But I I had that experience like. If I heard the first recording I did, I'd be like, "Yeah, not bad for the first attempt ever." <laughs> no, but I but I like that most of vocalists have learned on their own and not like from some DVD or or something like straight because they would sound nearly the same if they have, would have learned the technique like right away. Now, because you have sort of like learned through trial and error, it's it's you sound you then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So a sign of of things to come will be released on 8th of September. So are there like vocally some new things that you tried on this upcoming album? Um, I don't know about many new. Uh, I guess there probably are some new things, but it's it's the most attention I put on vocals ever. Like the vocals were the absolute. Um, sorry, I've got a really bad cold. Uh, the vocals were the main focus for the record. Uh, I think in the past we had been too, uh, or I'd been too concerned with like, oh, if the riffs are cool and the music's great, just scream over it and that's all good. But this time it was about really paying a lot more attention to the vocals, the melodies, the lyrics, and most importantly the delivery and like trying to connect with the audience and having like a as much character and emotion in in the vocals as possible. Um, and yeah, I I don't think there's anything new because I have done melodic singing before. I've done pitch scream. I've always done pitch screaming on solosa stuff since the start because I found that easier to project a pitch note than not. So that was always part of my style. Um, but I've I've just expanded my range a lot, and uh, we. Tune down one more note on the guitar now we're in c sharp standard and i can get even higher than i could have before like in terms of hitting the notes that i want to hit because we've gone down a bit usually like i find not to get too technical talking about theory but if you're hitting like a fifth in your vocal melody to what the root note is that's like the sweet spot for catchy <laughs> choruses and stuff so i can hit higher notes than ever before now Because we've gone down a bit on the guitar, so it's it's like vocally your most diverse album to date. Then, yeah, definitely, and the most confident I've sounded. So obviously, there's been quite a lot of talking about backing tracks. So, what's like your take on those when it comes to like performing live? 
do you use backing track to some of vocals or or would would you want to do it like old school way and do everything fully on your own or what's your take on that yeah for me personally i don't like i wouldn't want to use backing tracks for us there are um so we i also like knowing that if uh equip, like anything that has a backing track went down and we just had to play a show just borrow someone's amps we could still do it without relying on a computer or we actually have some we don't use a computer for our backing stuff but um the only vocals that we have on track is like there's a few like gang vocals yeah just but to, that's, like, that's understandable that you have those yeah but in terms of harmonies even i wouldn't put on a backing track some bands do and if I think uh, I, I could be wrong about this, so I don't want to speak out of line, but I feel like maybe Tesseract have some like harmonies on backing track, but their singer is perfect. I've actually had lessons from Dan, and he's like one of the most impressive live vocalists I've seen. So I think if you're like doing harmonies and you're hitting the lead high note, I don't think you can really complain, but um I get I maybe maybe Tesseract don't do that, so I, I shouldn't have said that unless I know for certain. But I think that's fine for other bands if they do that. Um I try not to do too many harmonies on the record so that when we do it live that nothing sounds like it's missing, really. So I have a couple of questions left. So so the second last one is that what were like your parents' reactions when they heard first time you screaming your lungs out? Do you remember what kind of feedback you got? Um, I can't remember. No, I was still living with my parents when we did the second album with the first one with me on vocals. Uh, but they never like heard me doing it in the house. I'd always I recorded that album when they were like at work. <laughs> I'd record all the vocals <laughs> in my bedroom. Um. Uh yeah, so I, I didn't really get I, I think they were like in said so they were impressed. They were just trying to be like supportive, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So so last question, any kind of advice that you would like to give to a young metal vocalist who is just about to start the journey? Anything that pops up into your mind? Yeah, I guess uh focus on trying to create the sounds and don't try and focus on being loud because whether you do fry technique or false chord, which are the main two techniques for metal screamers, um, you can do them both safely at a low volume and the co more confident you get, you can learn how to project them loudly safely. And I think the breath pressure you get from your diaphragm um, just comes with time and that's where eventually you're going to get your stamina and your um, projection on your volume from, from like learning to control your breathing. So when you first start out, I think it's just important just to try and make the sounds and get some distortion happening without doing it loudly, without trying to be as loud as you can. Just try and focus on the distortion and the sound. And then, yeah, just work on projection. But for me, if, if you can afford it because it's, it's hard to find good vocal uh instructors that specialize in metal but if you can speak to someone who really knows what they're doing or find another vocalist in your area and just ask them questions to try and get an understanding to see if you're on the right path or you're doing um like a healthy technique then that's that'd be good because it's so hard to know if you're doing something right or not with vocals because it's all just in your head you can't yeah. see it so it's trying to speak to as many other people as you can and get some advice from people you respect or who you know are doing it in some professional way or you know find a local band that play a lot of shows and maybe ask their singer about their technique if you can that kind of thing. thanks a lot just for this no worries thanks for having me